Great, thank you very much, Holly. Now, surely you will be heading into the kitchen to see how to make a Darwitz Ethiopian Classic Dora Wet with Chef Mark. Now, though, with over 25 years in New Zealand as an emergency doctor and GP, he's worked all over the country, written two internationally best-selling books, hosted TV and radio shows. You could do our job, actually. And for the last 10 years, he's saying, yes, I could, the last 10 years, <laughs> been a professional guest speaker to the likes of Google and Microsoft. Now, he's on a mission and wants to be the ambulance at the top of the cliff. To share his inspiring story, please welcome to the cafe and the Harvey Normal Lounge, Dr. Tom Mulholland. Yes! Awesome. Woo! Nice. Nice. Good to have you here, buddy. Yeah, that is quite a resume. Are you still working as an emergency doctor? Yeah, I am. I do three days a month or three evenings a month at Auckland City Hospital in the ED, and the rest of the time I'm out on the road, uh, my retro Chevy ambulance, driving around the country and doing things like this. Oh, nice. So we're going to talk a bit more about that. But what are you seeing in the hospitals at the moment? People coming in, what seems to be the major concerns? Oh, it's the same old thing. It's like uncontrolled diabetes, heart attacks, strokes, trauma, accidents. Uh, I work Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights, so alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. Mm. Oh, yeah, those nights would be the, the big nights too, wouldn't they? Yeah, I mean, alcohol presents any time of the day. You get a lot of people coming in at 10 o'clock in the morning, um, being found on the floor, that kind of stuff. But, yeah, Friday, Saturday nights... You know, especially with the lions on and the recent tests. Oh, uh, I bet, I bet. It's uh, a third test I'm working that evening, so hopefully I won't see you there. Drink responsibly, otherwise uh, we might, you might see me. Now, you are just saying that you were at a safety show last week where you were testing people's blood pressure, um, yep. and then we had a bit of a chat about blood pressure. Mm -hmm. I know what mine is. Mine's 110 over 60. Yeah, exactly. Is that good? Yeah. Yeah, and that's yeah. a big thing we say, what's your blood pressure? And a lot of people say, what's your blood pressure? Well, I don't know, doctor, sorry, I yeah. don't. <laughs> yeah, and we find that and traditionally women live longer than men because they used to go into the doctor and traditionally it was, you know, take the kids along, check my blood pressure, whereas a lot of blokes just don't want to know. They know more about their cars or their cows right. than they do, I don't know how many cows you've got, but um, <laughs> than, than, um, than they do about their own numbers, you know, and yeah. it's just... Uh, and you don't know that you've got high blood pressure. A lot of people don't know that they've got diabetes or pre-diabetes, so we test for that. Workplaces, supermarkets, forests, farms, and boom, like 30% of people have diabetes or pre-diabetes, type 2 diabetes, I should say. And, uh, you know, 30% of people have high blood pressure and they don't know, and they end up coming and having strokes in the emergency department, so save more lives being on the road than being the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff. Yeah. And are these types of problems preventable? Easily well, preventable? Yeah, totally. I mean, just, you know, not enough, you know, looking after salt. You know, people, I love my salt and two sugars in your coffee. And if you pick the stuff up early, um, especially like type 2 diabetes, just stop putting that two sugars in your coffee and uh, slow down and you could reverse your numbers. But it's all about knowing what your numbers are in the first place. So you can make them better? Yeah, and just, but a lot of people just don't know what they are. And so that's the campaign is know your numbers. Yeah. Mike, did you hear that? You've got to go and yes. figure out what your numbers are. Well, and how do we do that? Just obviously check with your GP. Yeah, you can go to your GP. There's lots of places that do workplace checks. And um, we've built an app that's called Kind Know Your Numbers um, dashboard. And you can look on your phone, mm -hmm. measure your mental health, your physical health, and also social health, which is really important. So healthy thinking, you know, stress is another thing that puts your blood pressure up. Yeah. Certainly a lot of stress. Uh, just you know, coming here, uh, even on a, a nice Tuesday, the oh, traffic was uh, <laughs> was <laughs> full you on. Your mindfulness and your breathing. Yeah, you? no, I was. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, yeah. what's your mission? With the ambulance, you yeah. see something about a retro ambulance. Are you driving around in that? Yeah, we've been on out? the road for yeah three years now. So we've been in forests, farms, supermarkets, just testing people. Uh, I think it's a nice shot of Molesworth Station as the mayor of Lower Hutt. There you go. So you know, just um, stopping people, popping up in supermarkets, and you know, you look at people that you think were healthy on the outside, but on the inside, their numbers are, are terrible. You know, and they're on a normal weight and they're not at risk. But you say, well, what is, what's your diet? And like a couple of I don't mention the names of the fizzy drinks, but they're on four or five energy drinks a day, which wow. is a sugar drinks, packet of fellows, that's my lunch, and you know, boom, they've got pre-type 2 diabetes. What do people do though when you stop them? You say you stop them to check their health. Do they look at you like, who is this crazy man in this old ambulance? What do I have, why, what's he checking me for? There's two types of people really. There's those that go, I've been meaning to get a check, but either I can't afford it, I'm too busy, or I haven't got around to it. Mm. And then those that look you in the eye and then run the other way or try not to get your eye. And uh, you know, the other ones that unfortunately tend to end up in the emergency department, I've got the old ostrich in the, the yeah. head in the sand kind of thing. But, you know, we've had people that didn't want to get checked, um, mongrel mob members, you know, a guy called Fats we've done a lot of work with. He's just, you know, he was, his HBRMC was 90 and he's down to 66 now and he would have got his legs cut off. Um, and now he's, you know, he's got a little, 
heaps of kids. Is that and, Fats there? Uh, yeah, on the left, he's, he's a legend now, so he's going around. He's, he's on the corporate speaking circuit now. He's uh, wow. talking Go about Fats. what he's doing. <laughs> he's inspiring lots of people. And the only thing he changed, and he'll say this, was his attitude. He just didn't want to know. He was angry for all sorts of reasons about us. He had other medical problems, which he talks about. And uh, it was just like one more thing, type 2 diabetes. But now he's woken up and he's taken it seriously. He's lost weight. And, you know, he'll, he'll stay out of hospital and he won't have to go on to dialysis and lose his eyesight and that yeah. kind of stuff. So you've been literally on a mission with the ambulance at the top of the cliff rather yep. than the bottom. Is it stories like fat stories that helps motivate, particularly men that are a little bit shy? Is, are those sorts of stories the ones that help? What, what do you think it is that gets people to actually motivate themselves and go and get a checkup? That's a good question. So what it is is what's important to people. So, for example, with fats, it, it was his children. He was like, and I said, how many kids have you got? And then he's got a lot of kids. And, I, and he had said, like, his here to dress his dad's stumps, you know, when his dad had his amputation. So, and I said, oh, so which one of your kids is going to dress your stumps? And so it's the language, you know. Right. We were in a, um, in a Muslim temple doing some testing and another man was just disinterested and like, oh, you know, like uh, the Lord decides when I come and go. And, you know, well, so then you try, what about your children? And then he goes, um, well, they don't need me anymore. And then he was quite difficult to deal with. And, and uh, then it was actually uh, one of our staff who does our media, when I wasn't looking, went up and said, hey, listen, you think it's a coincidence all your numbers are out? And he goes, what do you mean? He says, well, all your numbers are like, you know, like you're going to end up in hospital. It's a coincidence. Yeah. He goes, what do you mean? She says, well, do you think maybe the Lord sent Dr. Tom and his team to, to get you? And he kind of went, oh, I hadn't thought of that. And yeah. then what was even better, she said, um, maybe it's the Lord telling you that your children want you to be around because exactly. he was very dismissive. And the next thing he's like got his pill bottles and what does this one mean? And he and he was engaged. So it's just trying to find that hook that people that go. That actually engages them. Yeah. Mm. And, and, so, mm. so if people want to help um, or get involved, what can they do? You go to our Facebook page, so Dr. Tom on a mission on Facebook, and and uh, also we're looking for always sponsors to put. We might save some lives, but maybe maybe not the planet with that Chevy V8, um, <laughs> or just uh, yeah, go to our website, drtomonamission.com, and they'll come to a town near you. Awesome, excellent work. Thank you so much. You are inspiring. And I was just wondering, is this how you dress as a doctor? Because I reckon that helps as well. Do you just oh, walk around like that? I've just been at work and uh, doing so. I've just come straight from work, not the hospital work. Uh, uh, otherwise, I'll be wearing my scrubs. But nice. yeah, no, no. Keep it up. I love that. So approachable. Okay, thank you, Doctor. <laughs>